Psalm 119, verse 9 through 24. Wherewithal shall a young man cleanse his way by taking heed thereto according to thy word? With my whole heart have I sought thee. Oh, let me not wander from thy commandments. This is the prayer of my heart. You know, when the time, when a tough time comes and I feel like my heart is wandering or wants to wander from God's law, commandments, his word, his will for my life. I have to cry out these words, God, let my heart not wander from you. You know, draw my heart back to you, Lord. I don't want my wandering heart to run from the lover of my heart. Amen. Because I need him. We need him. He is life. Hallelujah. There is no life without Christ. None. Thy word have I hid in mine heart that I might not sin against thee. Blessed art thou, O Lord. Teach me thy statutes. With my lips have I declared all the judgments of thy mouth. I have rejoiced in the way of thy testimonies as much as in all riches. I will meditate in thy precepts and have respect unto thy ways. I will delight myself in thy statutes. I will not forget thy word. Deal bountifully with thy servant that I may live and keep thy word. Open thine eyes, mine eyes, open my eyes, that I may behold wondrous things out of thy law. I am a stranger in the earth. Hide not thy commandments from me. My soul breaketh for the longing that it hath unto thy judgments at all times. Thou hast rebuked the proud that err that are cursed, which do err from thy commandments. When we walk away from the word of God and disregard his words, his ways, we fall under the curse of God. Amen. We bring ourselves under curse, under judgment. And um, that's a harsh truth, but it is God's truth. Remove from me reproach and contempt, for I have kept thy testimonies. Princess also did sit and speak against me, but thy servant did meditate in thy statutes. So it doesn't matter what people say about us. You know, they can call us fanatics, lunatics, crazy, um, whatever. Because remember, they call our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ a fanatic, a lunatic. They even accuse him of having demons. And yet he is a holy God filled with you know, unconditional, unfailing, everlasting love for us, for them who call him a lunatic, who, you know, accuse him of having demons. So he's our master. He's our Lord. If our master went through that persecution, he says, rest assured, you as my servants will also go through the same persecution and suffering and count it all joy and rejoice greatly, he says, because our rewards is are great in heaven. Amen. So that's exciting. I don't know about you, but that's exciting. Our rewards are great in heaven. Hallelujah. So they can call us whatever names they want to. Amen. Amen. And that was it. I wanted to share that um, with you guys. Psalm 119, which is the heart beat of God. It's right in the middle of his word, right in the middle. And it is also the heartbeat of King David who wrote Psalm 119 and a whole bunch of other Psalms. Um, he is call a man after mine own heart by God himself. So right in the middle of the Bible, the word of God, the eternal living active word of God is Psalm 119, the heartbeat of God. Amen. Because God and his word are one. They are inseparable eternally in unity. Heaven and earth shall pass, but the word of God will abide forever and ever and ever. And he will accomplish his word and perform every word. Amen. So 
I wanted to share that with you and I also wanted to take a few minutes to share some encouraging scriptures from my devotional this morning is on the topic of um, overcoming temptations, trials, and struggles. I don't know about you guys, but it seems like the temptations um, that the enemy send my way is nonstop. You know, it's like, I'm like mind boggle. I'm like, where are they finding me? You know, where are these people coming from? Um, and not all temptations are through people. There's just a lot of that, but there's other types of temptations such as fear, such as insecurity, such as, um, you know, maybe tempting to um, hold on to resentment, um, bitterness or anger or want vengeance and uh, want to move ahead of the Lord and not trusting him and waiting on his timing and waiting on his ways because his ways are higher than our ways and he's faithful and true and he will accomplish his purpose and plans over our lives um, but yet we're tempted to move ahead um, of his timing in his ways um, by being impatient or just by being prideful ignorant or arrogant um, so temptations comes to us in many different ways but it seems like the enemy knows um, the specific areas of our weaknesses and so it seems like he sends that very specific temptation to us I don't know if you're finding that to be true in your life but I am seeing that you know over and over again to be true in my life it's like you know where are these people coming from you know it's like they find you through um, all sorts of avenues and and you just you know, it's like, is this a test? You know, <laughs> week after week is somebody new, something new. It's like, when will these tests stop? You know, but um, I guess the answer to that question is uh, it will never stop as long as, you know, we're breathing on this side of heaven. So, um, so every trials, hardship, suffering um, teaches us to be more obedient to be obedient to the word of god you know as the son of god jesus christ himself was taught obedience through suffering we too are taught obedience through temptations and sufferings and trials amen and we have to persevere okay take captive every thought to make it obedient to christ second corinthians 20 uh, verse 5 that's the first step we have to take captives every thought everything that comes to us whether through our own thoughts or someone else presented to us to consider ponder to tempt us with take captives of those things and bring it to obedient um, to Christ and Christ is his word first uh, John 1 verse 14 John 1 verse 14 um, says that um, the word became flesh dwell among us and that was jesus christ um and then verse one it says in the beginning was the word the word was with god the word was god the word is god so jesus christ and his word are one amen so we take every thought captive to make it obedient to christ make it captive obedient um to the word of god which is his heartbeat his will his purpose Oh God, I am being tempted beyond my strength to resist. I've been feeling this way this, uh, these last few weeks. I'm like, I can't take it anymore. Oh my goodness. But then I remember God's words that says he will not give me more than I can bear. So that gave me some comfort. I'm like, okay, we can do this. Because greater is he who lives in me than he that is in the world. And those who brings those things to me that are being used of the enemy. Amen. Please deliver me from this situation. I'm in a situation that needs deliverance. And I know that my God is faithful and true. And he is working it out. Don't know how he's working it out. I just know he's faithful and true. And he will deliver me and my household. That's all I know. And I give him praise for that. 
I know that I willingly walked into this situation. I lied to myself and you, believing I would not be tempted to sin. Guilty. But for me, in fact, the temptation is irresistible. I suppose, God, I'm tempting you to get me out of this mess. Jesus said not to put you to the test, but I have. God, please forgive me. I have been thoughtless and careless with my faith in you. Very convicted. I am very guilty of this very thing so many times. Please turn me away from my sin and help me walk on the path of righteousness. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Prayer and other believers can be the best defense against temptations. This is so true, guys. Um, someone said, or I've heard it said, um, much prayers, much power. Little prayers, little power. No prayers, no power. So I have found that to be true in my life. The more I stay in the present, the presence of God, his word, the more I read his word, study it, meditate on it and um, believe it, walk and stand upon the word of God. The stronger I am, the more I communicate and, and pray to the Lord, the stronger I am to resist the wiles of the enemy and also having my beloved brothers and sisters in Christ like yourselves. You know, and you guys are the joy of my heart, <laughs> the delight of my soul. You guys, ever since I found you on YouTube a year ago, um, I have felt belonged. I have felt like, um, oh my gosh, I'm not just out here in this big old lonely world floating by myself in this spiritual journey that nobody seems to understand because, you know, most of the churches do not understand the ways, the things of God, um, his, the Holy Spirit, his moves and his heart. Because many professed Christians and churches, especially those main denominations, are not filled with the Holy Ghost. I'm sorry if you're offended. That's just um, what I have seen and experienced. You know, they may have the Word of God. They read the Word of God, but... Um, they are not baptized, filled by the Holy Spirit of God. They're not baptized by the fire of God and the, and the Spirit of God as Jesus Christ himself has spoken in um, Luke 3.16, I believe, and Matthew 3.11. Um, so, please don't be mad at me. Just study the scriptures for yourself and ask for the Holy Spirit to um, fill us with his living water, baptize us in his spirit and in his fire. Amen. Um, and he will, all who seek him with all of their hearts and desire and long and yearns to fellowship with his Holy Spirit, he will do it because he is faithful. Amen. Sin beckons me, Lord Jesus. It is clear. It is a clear and present danger to my soul how can I silence its enticing voice? Sometimes it is impossible or feels like it's impossible to silence. I not only hear it, but I also listen to it. Very guilty. It speaks to me in words that are familiar to me. It has an intimate knowledge of my weaknesses. And that seems to be so very true. It seems to be... It seems like the enemy knows our weaknesses and attacks us in that very area over and over and over again. It's like an onslaught, you know, and he doesn't stop. He's relentless. So therefore, we have to be relentless and diligent into getting into the presence of God, the shadow of the Almighty, the Word of God. Abide and remain in the Word of God, in the presence of God. We have to be diligent. We have to be relentless just as he is relentless in destroying us and bringing the onslaught against the sons and daughters of God. Amen. Remind me that it has no dominion over me. Oh, Lord, help me not yield to it. You have given up your life for me so that I can be faithful to God. Moreover, your spirit dwells in me to empower me to live under grace. 
Your words are what I want to hear. Your words are what I listen to. Thank you, Jesus, for delivering me from sin. For sin shall not have dominion over you, for you are not under the law, but under grace. Romans 6.14 And grace is alive. Grace is not a dead package, you know, a one-time gift, lifeless gift package from God. Grace is the gift of God, empowering, living gift of God in the lives of born-again children of God to help us overcome the power of sin, death, hell, and the grave. Amen. Prayer is my best refuge from the temptations of the world, holy God. When sin comes knocking at my door, and it does often, um, that's when I turn to you. So, Temptations will always come our ways as long as we're breathing on this side of heaven. The key thing is to turn to God, run to God, submit to God, resist the devil, and he will flee. But we have to turn to God. We have to submit to God, submit to his word. Amen. Abide in Christ. Abide in his word. Obey his word. Amen. That's how we submit to God. And then Resist the devil. So submit to God first. Resist the devil second. And he will flee. And that is the natural outcome of what happens when we submit to God and God's word, God's will, God's desire for our lives. Then we are resisting the devil. And then he will flee. Amen. But first thing first is we have to submit to God. Take every thought captive to the obedient of Christ, obedient of the word of God, amen, then he will resist and flee. And this is a promise. And I know this promise works. It's the only way that we'll overcome sin, temptation, is by submitting to God first, staying in his presence, in his word, abiding. You know, when we're with God, who can overcome us? Amen. He is um, the all-powerful, almighty God that no adversary can even compare. So it's imperative that we stay in his presence under the shelter of the Most High in our secret chambers, the Holy of Holies, where his mercy seat, where his grace is. This is why we must encourage ourselves, one another, to run to the Holy of Holies, to get into our war room, our prayer rooms, you know, our secret chambers where God is beckoning us to come to Him. Amen. Just like that dream I shared with you yesterday. Sin is also beckoning us and knocking on our doors. But God, the Lord Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit is also knocking on the doors of our hearts. Come to me, child. Come to me. I'll help you. Just come to me. Amen. <laughs> and I have found the toughest battle, the toughest temptation of all times is the power to get into the presence of God. Oh my goodness. It's like everything, everybody just screaming out for your attention. Do this for me. You know, do that. Do this. You know, a, a ton of stuff, responsibilities galore and distractions and, and temptations and everything else that we face in this life. It's like everything is thrown at us so that we would not get into the presence of God, spend alone time with Him in the Holy of Holies, spending time in the Word of God, meditating, um, dwelling, fellowshipping, worshiping God. Because if we get there, then we are strengthened. Then sin has no dominion, power, over us we become strong in the presence of God in the presence of God there is fullness of joy there's peace there's wholeness restoration um, there's hope there's faith amen the promises of God are made clear and made known because God makes his covenant known to those who fear him those who love him those who obey him and abide in him and with him amen so Jesus says if my word remains in you 
then I and my father will come and make our abode in you. That means that they will come and live in our hearts. And when God lives in our hearts, he reveals his secrets, his mysteries, his plans, his covenant. He makes it known to us. He exposes the plots and plans of the enemy to us before they even do it. You know, months before they even commit it, he exposes uh, to us because he's faithful like that. And he will warn his children because he loves us and he will show his children the mysteries of his kingdom and even the plans of the enemies that's our god hallelujah what an awesome god he is worthy to be praised am i finished yet i think i am so <laughs> i've got to run got so many errands um things to prep for uh, this weekend and um things that to prepare not just for work uh, but also for my boys gotta figure out some creative ways to um entertain them so spend some quality time with them i love you guys i've gotta run god bless you remember we need the word of god amen hide god's word in our hearts hide his word meditate declare believe Stand firm in the words and promises of God and take captive every thought, everything that the enemy sends our ways or our little ingenious minds or is it genius um, comes up with. If it goes against the word and will of God, take captive and make it obedient to Christ. Amen. God bless you. I'll talk to you soon. Have a great weekend. I love you guys. Let's pray for one another. We need each other. Amen. God bless you.